I'm going to be looking at today this kit which is a Tamiya de Havilland Mosquito FB MK4 slash NF Mark II. So it is quite a weighty box. Uh, the, the box itself is a standard Tamiya wire and it's about what, 35 centimetres long by what's that 20, uh, 20 centimetres wide and well, I actually don't measure that whilst I'm here just over seven centimeters deep so standard sort of tamiya box and as i said you, you kind of feel so you've got quite a bit in there uh, lovely bit of box art it was actually uh, made out of wood or the main struts of it were made out of wood and canvas which was put over it was made in the wall and it took a few uh, shots the bullets pretty much went right through i wouldn't say they were indestructible but they were quite hard to shoot down and of course quick and cheap to build it was actually a bomber but handled pretty much as good as a fighter plane and the pilots absolutely loved it so box art looks really good and on the side you can see we've got one which is in the gray which is the um what's that uh the fb mark ii or the rs625 number 143 squadron and that will have the rockets underneath or on this side you've got more of the the night fighter type well actually it's not a night fighter really it's a radar one where you've got instead of guns at the front you've got antennae and that is the number 157 squadron reference number is 61062 and it's a wingspan of uh, 344 millimeters which is smidge over a foot wide and length is uh, 26.4 centimeters. Let's have a look what we've got in there. So, uh, we've got quite a lot of sprues, including a clear sprue, and we've got some instructions. Okay, and a decal sheet at the very bottom. What is useful with the larger versions is you can actually um, cut these out if you really wanted to, or do a photocopy of it cut it out and then for the example that green you can actually cut it out and use it as a mask itself to then paint over there's nothing on here that isn't on there it's just a, a larger version of it so i'm assuming that's from that oh and on the back, nothing on the back of that one but on the back one uh, we do actually have uh, the information for the 143 squadron which is more of the gray one other one on the bottom yeah and then you've got the the nighttime one which was the much more darker one as standard you, actually it's a nice little book this you've got um, a bit of in details about the kit let's see what we got so it all uh, opens out so one two three four five uh, so it's a ten pages uh, so let's start at the very beginning so first part is the engines or the wet engine cells the covers uh, so you've got two of those one on the right one on the left simple parts then doing each of the wings uh, looks like you're gonna have to be drilling out a few little holes depending on which variant you're doing uh, if it's gonna go for the A variant then there's only two if you're doing the B variant which has got the rockets you're gonna be doing a lot more and the C version which was the radar one just need to do one at the very end so always bear in mind when making a kit check those things because you've got to drill them out uh, from the inside before you sandwich the wings together talking sandwiching the wings together that's part three main landing gear uh, looks easy enough Pl plenty of struts to make it look to make it look interesting uh, that's assuming that you're probably going to be having the gear down um, which I would be, but um, yeah, anyway, let's have a look. So, both landing gears, two separate actually instruction parts there, those then go onto the wing. So, at the moment, we're not even starting with the cockpit as most planes do, or the fuselage, we're literally building the wings up first. Now it's not to stage eight, we get onto the instrument panel. Uh, you've got two instrument panels in there one for the pilot, one for the bomber, or the navigator, cockpit assembly. And here you've also got the uh, gun bay. And then it's actually going to be attaching those little sub assemblies and the seats onto the sort of like the fuselage spars that's coming across. 
and uh, basically yeah, building up your sub assemblies, even putting the bombs into the bomb bay. Paint your pilots. Uh, pilots then go in. Uh, you need to slot them in. Get the uh, the old control column between their legs, and once they are in, then bring the two fuselage halves together. If you're having the bomb doors open or shut. If they're going to be open, it looks like you actually got to separate them yourself, not a separate fit. And then once you've got that fuselage together, slot the wings on, slot the tail plane on, props go on, canopy goes on, wing tips go on, and then yep, build them all as sub bits. Uh, and then just the ladder, typical standard Hamia decals are normally pretty good quality. So what have we got there? Right, so these are yeah, quite good registration on them. So uh, actually good, bright, vibrant colours, which is good because you've got your yellows and your whites there as well. And also, which is a little bit odd in this scale, but you've also got decals for the... Uh, straps the seat belts they do seem a little I must admit they do seem a little on the thick side this is looking quite good so you've got those uh, panel lines and as I said before this isn't actually made up of sheet metal so you're not gonna have so many rivets on there it was actually a made from a wooden frame over that frame would be stretched canvas and then a sort of a resin sort of thing was painted over the canvas which would harden it so it was actually sort of fabric over wood. Um, so actually, like the top of the wings is actually quite plain because it just was fabric. Although I must admit, I don't know if, if there might have been a slight bit of texture to it, um, just to sort of try to give that fabric, stretched fabric feel, but there isn't. Um, you do have some sort of little sort of creases in there, which actually I don't know how well it's gonna show it sort of more catches the light than is actually sort of visible. I think the idea for that is where you sort of like have um, the fabric pulled taut in different areas. There's sometimes you get like those little bows and stretches. So I think that was how that's meant to look. But overall, you have got riveting details, especially around the engines. Um, the, the rivets are raised, which is quite nice. They feel quite good. And the panel lines are sunk, so that should work very well in our favour the gain on the um actually let's just check the odd thing is on the tailplane those rivets look as so they're actually recessed whereas the rivets on the top of the wing in that part uh are actually protruding which is and those ones are recessed rivets lower parts of the wings you've got the recessed rivets recessed panel lines and uh, that is looking good. Not a huge amount of detail actually in the um, wheel well, but I'm sure if we're doing it, we could add a little bit of um, extra gubbins in there just to make that a little bit more interesting. But at least you have got a little bit of pipe work and it looks like um, a hydraulic line and two wires running through. Fuselage halves and in here, we've actually got two sprues. Uh, and a little bag of um, caps, end caps. Let's come to this one first, which are the engine nacelles, okay? And again, the recess panel detail with the occasional lumps and bumps, actually, which is quite nice. Most of it is recessed, but like on those wing parts, there are some little raised rivets here and there as well yeah it's a shame with the rear wheel that uh, it doesn't look like it's going to have the weighted effect and the weighted effect is when it's flattened like a car tire it is not actually perfectly round when it sits on the ground um, okay so um, let's actually start with the little fellas there so we've got um, two pilots I initially thought they were exactly the same but no they are different so that's good um, one's got his hands on his lap and for one, the other one is missing a right arm, and there's two different options for his right arm. Both options look the same. So I honestly have no idea why you have two right arms. Uh, and actually some good detail, so that's going to be in the bottom of the bomb bay actually. So that's the uh, fuel tanks in there. And that is actually, I think that's fuel tanks, or 
yeah um, oh there's that radio set so you've actually got some quite good detail on there and looking at the actual site the fuselage that is probably the most plainest fuselage I have seen for a long time there's pretty much from there to there no detail whatsoever apart from a slight stretched ribbing uh, effect I'm not even too sure if that's intentional or not of just where that canvas is going to be stretched over a frame but no no rivets no joins no panels just looking at it it does actually look a good quality plastic and I've got to say there's no no uh, flash on there which is when you get the um, little bit of um, extra plastic that sort of comes out between the moulds so um, no, that is all very crisply and tightly moulded and a combination there of raised details and recessed details should mean it will take a wash nicely to really start bringing those details out next here we are we have got uh, only one sprue in this bag uh, this is a bit more of the internals so and there we go. we've got the nose cone and this is where the Bren guns are going to be and again good details so here you'd either have your Bren gun sticking through or build up that aerial that comes through for the reconnaissance version that's actually very thin plastic there for the ladder so they can get in and out and a little bit of detail just on the cockpit floor and on the bulkhead but not very much uh, yeah you've got a bit of a bit going on however I do think it will benefit from a little a little bit extra when it's being made and the final two sprues as I noticed these are the same well, at least I, I assume they are the same you should be because that would make more sense take that out and then that is sprue E yeah they are both labelled sprue E so they are going to be exactly identical to each other and there we go so that's got the bombs on there uh, that's also got more of the landing gear struts the rails for the rockets interesting I have to check which build doing two different sorts of propeller that one's a bit more rounded that one's a bit more pointy and when you decide which one the a b c or version you're going to do when looking at the instructions it will show you which option to use and the um yes yeah, actually again looking at the landing gear you've got some quite good detail on there you've got little rivets on there so once that's all painted up get a weathering wash on there so that should all go nicely and um oh going back to these little caps what these are for is when you're actually building the engine up you don't put the props on straight away what will happen is these will have a little pin that comes out the back and this little rubber cap will fit actually or either that will either go into there one way or the other but then there'll be a little pin so that the props can actually come um, on um, be rotatable you could uh, take them off for transport let's have a quick look at that clear screw but there is it is clear well obviously it's a clear part and it is shiny but there is obviously quite a bit of distortion and I think that is just due to the, the amount of curvature it is I must admit it is actually quite thick but that will do and I think you know if you've got the detail in there uh, I think if you went overboard the detail it might limit how much of that you'd actually see that's what we've got in the box and that is my review of Tamiya's de Havilland Mosquito FB Mark IV and the NF Mark II versions uh, first of all is the uh, canopy mask this is the Edward mask and this is EX029 and it's for this mosquito the FB Mark IV NF Mark II by the time you kiss and what this is is basically um, is masking tape but what they've done is instead of trying to it allows you to paint the canopy without getting paint on the clear parts and there's the instructions obviously you can just sort of see whereabouts each one of those goes so you've got the little layout of what's actually on here 
and then whereabouts each goes. And that actually includes the wheels as well. So you can paint the wheel hubs, then put the masking over, then paint the black for the tire without getting the black of the tire on the wheel hub. Uh, the main bit of course is for the canopy. There's a lot of panes of glass actually in that and each one needs to be masked up. And if you get that on just right, you can then paint over and it will mean when you take the masking off, the paint comes off with it, just leaving the strips of the paint where you need it to do it. And that should mean that you can still see into the canopy. I also got the Edward Zoom. And again, this is for the Mosquito Kit, and it's uh, Edward FE239. Now these are to replace what's in the kit. If you recall, things like the seat belts in the kit were actually decals. You just actually put a decal on over the seat. These basically are printed out of very, the very thin metal. And what you've got there is you have your seat belts, and you've also got the uh, instrument panel as well, which has already got not just white blobs, but actual instruments painted on there. And this, of course, is very, very thin, but very, very detailed. So instead of just putting flat decals on, because these are actually going to be metal and they actually hold the shape as you bend them, you can get them to sit in a much more realistic way. So they're not just flat on the contours of the chair, but actually draped down. And that was um, uh, a little um, clear part, which has also got some of the instrument panel details on there as well. That will actually go behind there because there's actually holes in there so that will then go behind and therefore you should actually be able to see the instrument readings around the actual instrument bezel so quite a lot of detail so this is by Aries um, reference 4177 what do we have here then okay instructions I've uh, got that little bit of photo etch Oh, normally they put a bit of foam in there to stop everything all banging around because otherwise things break off which already has happened. This is the instructions and that is a lot more basic than I thought it was going to be. So essentially what we're going to be doing is making a, a, a little sub-assembly and dropping it into the main kit. But they're all cast on uh, resin blocks. Resin is really good because it's similar to plastic, as in the moulded plastic that you get your sprues on when you're making a plastic kit, but it can um, be finer detail. There's a limit to how much detail you can actually have in moulded plastic. Um, the resin does allow it to be thinner and have more detail to it. In fact, if I hold that up to the light, I can almost pretty much see through through that. You can actually see when I put my finger on there. That's pretty much translucent. That's how thin that part would be. Uh, we do also have a little piece of um, photo etched part. This part here, that's what's going to be actually sitting on there. That is the, the deck everything's going to be sitting on. And you've got some quite nicely moulded detail where the guns fit into and also the wires that would be operating the guns. The uh, electric control cables on there, various boxes of transistors and resistors. Now this is going to be the belt, the ammo belts that feed in. Uh, one for each gun because there's four Bren guns in there. Various brackets that hold the guns into place. But that's the ammo boxes, so the ammo will come out of the boxes, up the chutes, into the guns themselves. That looks like that's actually going to be the um, yeah, but yeah, put the back part of the Bren. And then we've actually got the um, barrels themselves, which you cannot actually really see on here, but there should be little dimples down the side. So when it actually gets a wash, it will have that sort of drilled out effect where that will you know, let the heat disperse. So the build up is, once that's done, that's only going to be barely an inch big, uh, but it will then have it so we can have it so that it looks like it's being serviced where the, instead of it being sort of closed up, that will be open and then really detail up those Bren guns in there. That's the Ares uh, upgrade set for the gun bay. And a final purchase to go with this is the paints. And these paints 
are the Vallejo model wear. Just point out, if you're buying paints for a model and you're buying Vallejo ones, which I actually really like, some people don't bother them at all. I do enjoy them. They work well with me, my airbrush, my air pressure, how I spray. Some people just don't get on with it at all. It could be humidities, whatever reason. But if you're buying Vallejo paints and you've got an airbrush, go for the ones that say model air on the front. If they just say model, then they're for brush painting. And uh, this one's got the uh, RAF colours from around the Battle of Britain. So if at a later date I want to do a Spitfire or a Hurricane or a Lancaster, then uh, quite a lot of those colours should actually cross-reference. But in these, they cost about £20 and you get eight paints. Um, and they all come in the little uh, dropper bottles. So that has actually got the Mosquito on there and that tells me what the paint codes will be as well. I think that sums up my review of the Tamiya de Havilland Mosquito. Hope you've enjoyed watching this. Make sure you follow me so you can watch and build along. If you're doing this kit and you've got it and you want to build it, then it'd be a great time to dig it out, build along with me, follow it, maybe ask some um, seasoning techniques that I'm using, ask any questions as I go along the way, or if you're just interested in modelling, have me on in the background and you can see how I'm making models and you can try, try to inspire yourself for your kit. Uh, make sure you follow along. Any questions, of course, let me know. Uh, follow me on pretty much all the social media. It's Rob's Models. You should be able to hunt me down. Hope you've enjoyed that review of Tamiya's Mosquito. I'm looking forward to building it. Make sure you get following. I'm going to go off and have a cup of tea now. Hopefully, I'll see you soon.